Thanks to you, I'm back to Bear Recap with University of California head football coach Joe Cap, featuring highlights of yesterday's game and special inside cow reports by Christine Hansen. Now, here's your host, Joe Fonzi. Good afternoon again, everyone, and welcome to our final edition of Bear Recap. Joe Cap's final game as coach of the Bears could not have been scripted any better. The Bears stunned 16th-ranked Stanford in the 89th big game by a final score of 17 to 11. Stanford took the opening kickoff and looked as if it would march for a touchdown. Brad Muster takes the pitch here and throws the option pass to Eric Snelson. Quickly, Stanford had a first and goal at the California 7. Two running plays move the ball to the 3, but on third and goal, Pace pass to Brian Morris actually loses the yard. So Stanford was forced to try a field goal. David Sweeney had hit on only 3 of 12 attempts coming into the big game, and he gave the Bears a boost by missing this 21-yarder. Cal had dodged a bullet, and the game was still scoreless. After an exchange of punts, the Bears had a second and two from their own 27. Senior Kevin Brown fires one over the middle to James Deaver. It's good for 20 yards to the 47. This Cal drive stalled, but the Bears again forced Stanford to punt, and Cal took over on its own 30. The Bears were facing a third and four at the 36. Brown then hits Chris Richards in the flat for the first down to the 41. On the next play, Brown and Richard took up for seven more yards. This time, Richard slanting off to the right. The Bears would get one more first down before the quarter ended. It was still a nothing-nothing game. The second period began with Cal on its own 46 with a second and 15 call. Once again, it's to Brown to Deavers' connection. Deavers breaks a tackle or two and picks up 29 yards to the Stanford 25. Stanford's defense then stiffened, and Leland Ricks trotted out to attempt a 34-yard field goal. Ricks booted it through the uprights to give California a 3-0 lead. Ricks has had some problems in his two years as the Bears kicker, but he winds up his senior season having connected on 12 of 16 field goal tries. After a Stanford punt, Cal was looking at a third and seven at the Bears' 10. For a moment, it looks as if Brown's pass is picked off by Kevin Richardson, but Devers wrestles the ball away, not only is it a completion, it's also a first down. Take another look, just a super play by the sophomore Devers, probably the toughest of his five first half catches. On the next play, the Bears went on top, Brown drops back and lofts one deep downfield. Freshman Mike Ford has beaten the card secondary, Ford with a nice grab, but he can't keep his balance. Still, it's a 61-yard gain, Cal's longest pass play of the season, and the Bears had a first down at the card 22. Watch Brown roll left. He somehow avoids the pressure and connects with Devers again. Number 85 struggles down to the five-yard line. The Bears had a first and goal. <laughs> on play action, Brown will roll right. The pressure is on. And he throws a touchdown to Peoples. What a catch by Wendell Peoples. <laughs> The senior Peoples had his first touchdown of the year, and he later described the score. Well, on that play, I run a corner pattern. They were, I think, in the zone defense, and I got behind to it, and uh, Kevin threw the ball up, and uh, it was it looked like to me it was going to turn into a jumping contest, and there was no way I was going to let him take the ball. There was no way. Suddenly, Cal enjoyed a 10-point lead, and the Bear fans in Memorial Stadium were sensing upset. Stanford did move the ball well on the ensuing possession, but on third and eight from the Cal 39, John Pay couldn't find a receiver. But Natu Tua Tagaloa could find Pay. It's an eight-yard loss, one of three sacks by Natu yesterday, and again, Stanford had to punt the ball away. The punt was a touchback, so Cal had a first and 10 on its own 20. Brown then made one of his few mistakes in the game. Brad Humphreys intercepts Kevin Pass, and Stanford was in business at the Cal 28. But again, the California defense held, so Sweeney came out for a 48-yard field goal try and went about 48 and a half yards, barely clearing the crossbar, but it was good. This came with 48 seconds to go in the half. The teams would head to the locker rooms with Cal holding a seven-point advantage. 
At halftime, Stanford had totaled eight first downs to Cal's seven, but the Cardinal had just 118 yards of total offense to the Bears' 195. When we come back, we'll have second half highlights. Stanford kicked off to begin the third quarter. We pick up the action on Cal's first possession. The Bears would pick up a pair of first downs on their opening drive of the third period. Round to fellow senior Kevin Cushing here for nine yards to the 38 of Cal. The Bears had a first and 10 at their own 43. Brown went for it all again to Ford. But this time the two could not connect. Instead, it's the Cards Walt Harris with the interception at the Stanford 10. After an exchange of punts, Stanford drove into Cal territory. Here it's second and nine for the Cards on the California 39. Pay rolls left and tries to escape the pass rush, but freshman Joel Dixon wraps him up for a loss of one. Now it's third and ten, and Pay turns in one of his better throws of the day. A strike to Brian Morris on the right sideline. It's good for 11 yards to the Cal 29. Now we pick it up with the third and 11 from the 30. Pay has Brad Muster open on the left side, but Muster appears to lose the ball in the glare. Whatever the case, it's incomplete, and Sweeney came on for his third field goal try. This one was well off the mark, and again, Stanford would come up empty. The miss came with just 35 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The period ended the way it began, with California on top, 10 to 3. The Bears began the fourth period facing a third and five at their own 36. Brown spots Todd Powers out of the backfield. It's a 13-yard gain to the Cal 49. After a one-yard run, Brown and Cushing combined for 13 more yards to the Stanford 37. Brown was outstanding in his only extended duty this year. Brown hit on 15 of 23 passes for 221 yards. Devers totaled 99 yards on his seven receptions. This one's worth a dozen to the 25. But a combination of penalties and sacks moved the Bears out of scoring range, and Stanford regained possession on its own 17 after a Scott Tabor punt. Here it's third and four from the 23, and that man, Tua Tagaloa, comes through once more. He sacks pay for a loss of four. Stanford again punted to Cal. The Bears looking at a second and seven from the card 47. Second down and seven for Cal. As they want to run the end around to Mike Ford. Ford into Stanford territory, the 40. Still on his feet, he could go all the way. It's a race to the end zone, and he gets in. Last year, Cal scored on a 45-yard reverse by Vince Delgado in the big game. Ford was replacing the injured Delgado in the lineup. Here's how the freshman explained the Bears' second touchdown. When I came around, Kevin pitched the ball, and it made me go a little deeper. And because I went deeper, I got around him. And then when I turned up, I seen Toy Cook coming, and I seen uh, Cam King coming over, and he blocked him out. And then James Deaver blocked somebody on the inside, and it created a little lane. And I just ran up the lane. I knew Cook was, you know, he was taking outside. So I just went outside and kept on running up the field. So midway through the final period, Cal led 17 to three. The Bears appeared to be in complete command. Here on second and 10 from the card 42, Ken Harvey lowers the boom on pay. The 11 yard loss set up a third and 21, but then how quickly the game changed. 556 and counting as Stanford seeing its hopes of a 10 win season very rapidly took away here. As Pay goes back to pass, he's a whole bundle on third down and throws for it all. Has James out there, and James oh, with a superb catch oh, at the 20-yard line. He could go. 10. Oh. Touchdown, Stanford. <laughs> wow. The 69-yard score from Pay to Jeff James brought the cards to within eight. Stanford went for a two-point conversion, and Pay's pass to Jim Price narrowed Cal's lead to 17-11. Stanford stopped Cal, and the Cards began a drive on their own 16. They were still there on third down, but Pay bullets one to James over the middle. Gary Hine gives James a shot, but James holds on, and Stanford maintains possession. Now Stanford has a second and 14 at its own 45. Pay with a quick toss to Kevin Scott. Scott motors all the way down to the Bears' 37. Then the Cal defense made its most impressive statement in a day of eloquence. Natu runs down Pay once more. It's a big play on two counts. First, obviously, a 13-yard loss, but also it forced Stanford to use its last timeout. So now it's second and 23, and Pay feels the heat yet again. Harvey belts the Stanford quarterback. Pay coughs up the football. Stanford center Andy Sinclair recovers, but time was rapidly running out for the Cardinal. 
And on fourth and 26, Pay was running for his life. His desperation pitch is caught by Morris, but Morris and his teammates would have had to lateral about five times to get the first down. He wound up about 25 yards short, and Cal ran out the clock. Then Joe Cap rode above the ecstatic Bear players and fans, a 17-11 win in his final game. The scene can much better be portrayed with pictures than words. California's win has to be considered one of the biggest upsets in big game history. Stanford, though, still leads the overall series 42 to 37, and there have been 10 ties. When we come back, we'll hear some post-game comments from some very happy Golden Bears. The win by Cal takes some of the sting out of what had been a very disappointing season. We now go to the locker room to hear from the Bears. I think a lot of it was for ourselves, and uh, Coach Cap wants it that way. I mean, we played mostly for ourselves, for him too, though, because it's his last game. we got to give him a good one. But a lot for, especially as fifth-year seniors, a lot for ourselves, a lot of self-pride. I think it was more a team thing. I don't think everybody went to the game saying, well, let's win this one for Coach Cap, or let's win this one for ourselves. I think everybody just had self-respect and pride and uh, just the fact that we're a lot better than a 2-9 and nine team. We just wanted to illustrate that we were. And then no better, no better team to do it against except for Stanford. I don't know how to say it. You know, the, the man's leaving and he passes on information to us that it's going to make us better men, make us better players in the future. It's a great man. This is my last game as a football player. Uh, I couldn't be any happier. Uh, and putting it in perspective, to, to know that that we didn't go out losers, that we went out winning the big game, that's, that's going to mean a lot. It uh, means a lot right now, and I'm sure that I don't have a full appreciation for it right now. And uh, I'm going to be working on that throughout, throughout tonight and the rest of this week. I just, you know, it's, it's coming up on Thanksgiving, and, and uh, you know, thank God for everything we got, because this is just the most beautiful thing in the world. God's a bear today, I suppose. Christine Hansen's Inside Cal reports have been a regular feature here on Bear Recap. Her final report focuses on two bears who put the foot in football. Thanks, Joe. You know, this year on Inside Cal, we have met some big names. People like Mark Hicks, Hardy Nickerson, and Troy Taylor. All guys who see a lot of playing time. Today, we're going to meet a couple of players who see very little time on the field, yet have a very big impact on the outcome of a game. It's probably not fair that so much of the responsibility for victory or defeat should rest on the shoulders of a kicker but that is often their burden. It is their lot in life to impart great force to a football and then allow its delicate trajectory to help or hinder the cause of their teammates. Here at Cal, the dubious honor of kicking the football has fallen to Scott Tabor, the punter, and Leland Ricks, the place kicker. Scott and Leland spend a lot of time together, partly because they're friends, but perhaps mostly because they share an experience the rest of their teammates can't relate to. Place kicker only has one chance. Uh the offense has three chances to get a first down. The kicker has one chance to get a field goal. Uh, it's tough when you miss a field goal because you don't always get a chance to redeem yourself. As a punter, Scott Tabor shares the pressure of having to do well with only a limited number of chances. One kick off the side of the foot and the field position his teammates have fought for can quickly go down the drain. Nevertheless, Scott says he's glad he's not a place kicker. There's a lot more pressure on the place kicker, there's no question. You know, he's I can kick the ball pretty much anywhere across the field. If, you know, as long as I get good height and distance, it's not going to really matter. Whereas, you know, he's got, you know, just a certain area he's got to kick from, you know, through the goalpost. So, you know, there's, there's quite a bit of difference, and I'm glad I'm not in his place. Here's the snap. Here's the kick. Plenty of distance. It looks good. He got it. A 53-yarder for Leland Rick. Like any place kicker, Leland Ricks has experienced his share of ups and downs. The long field goal against Oregon State had to be one of the good moments. A 53-yard field goal that appeared to clear the crossbar by a good 10 yards. With a leg like that and now having played his final game, Rick said he would love to try out for a pro team. The same can be said for Scott Tabor, although he still has one year of college in front of him. Every kid's dream to play pro football, you know, some pro sport. You know, I'd like to do it, but, you know, if, if not, I've, I'm happy with what I've done. You know, I have no regrets of... Uh, you know, if I, if I don't make it, I don't make it. That's fine. You know, there's, there's life after football. And that's one thing a lot of people don't realize. 
As the other players grind their way through another tough practice, kickers can often be found together, off to the side, not doing much of anything until the kicking period begins. But of course, a kicker's burden is largely mental and emotional, not physical. This is a fact of life Scott and Leland point out to their teammates, teammates who often give them a hard time about their leisurely practice schedule. <laughs> yeah, they do. But, uh, you know, like I tell them, I say, hey, you know, you guys chose the rough stuff, you know. You guys could have became kickers, but you did. You know, it's a great life. You know, you sit on the <laughs> sideline. You, you don't do much, you know. It's, but, you know, it's, it's, it's mentally tough. You got to be able to come in at one time and do the job. You know, whereas they, you know, get a chance to redeem themselves, we get very few. Yeah, they always uh, say, God, I wish I was a kicker. And I say, well, <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> I'm Christine Hansen. We'd like to thank Christine and her producer Tim Larson for their fine work this season. In a moment, we'll have some final thoughts. Head coach Joe Cap went out a winner, but he did not want to speak to us one on one after the game. It wouldn't be appropriate, however, to finish this show without hearing from Cap. And here's what he had to say to the press after the game I've never been through anything like this year. To these men's credit, to survive it and to come back and play the way they played today is a great tribute to the smell of bear. This has been a nightmare season. <clears throat> I've never believed that the earthquake was going to hit out here, living out here, growing up out here. But I can't think of anything more that could have happened to hurt our football team than happened this year. This young football team and I mean it's young. With all the adversity that it faced this season, has had to learn the hard way. As a teacher, I have to be held accounted, accountable for what the students have learned. And as I said to you along the way, we weren't getting enough wins in the bank, so I understand that. I will continue my <clears throat> uh, small sacrifice of not having a taste of tequila until they win a Rose Bowl, and I'll be watching them closely and rooting hard so that I can have another taste. I uh, love the game of football, <clears throat> and I, my best recollection, that's the first time I've ever been carried off of any field, hurt or otherwise. <laughs> Feels good. A lot of men learned of what it takes to be a team, and it's very that's what I was thinking on the on Gary Hines and Lefty Hendrickson's uh, shoulders that these two men really are the epitome of what a team team football is about and and these young bears they'll get it done That's it for our final edition of Bear Recap as the Bears go out a winner, 17 to 11 over Stanford in the 89th big game. Thanks again for joining us all season, and we'll see you again next year.
recap is brought to you by Toyota. Looking out for you has made Toyota number one in compact truck sales. And by Coors Extra Gold, the beer with the taste you can see. And by Pacific Bell, a Pacific Telesis company. And by the U.S. Army Reserve. Once a month, give yourself a weekend of challenge. And by your Bay Area Ford dealers, where you can get hot deals. From outer space. No, I'm from Iowa. I only 